This is the Will Clayton Church of Christ in Lumber, Texas. This is May 28, 2023. Sunday evening message. How do we question God and anger Him? How do we question God and anger Him? Go right to our text. Exodus chapter 3. Thank our brothers for leading us in appropriate worship. We have no problem. No debating argument. Serving God, probably now we can go into a lesson which we would hope would not ruin all the glory we've seen thus far. Exodus 3 and I want to make sure we hold a few thoughts in our minds concerning this thought of questioning. Uh, as we know, Brother Augustine Blanca came out, the, everybody was gone and there was one left that could give him an answer about life and death. He accepted it and was baptized into Christ Jesus. I want to pray for him as he battles down there in Salt Lake City, Utah. We pray he will stay faithful. But the idea I want to know is, is that when you deal with this thought of question, uh, there's a couple of ways to look at things. We're going to give you a meaning. That can help you and me both understand what is going on in this world. Now look at this meaning as far as question and thing like that. You know, a person can ask a question and they can have good intention or bad. Uh, we look at the understanding of the query to ask a question about something, especially in order to express one's doubts about it or to check its validity or accuracy. Jesus asked a question like this to all of us and only the righteous can know the answer. And the question is, how is the Christ David's son? Seeing by the Holy Ghost, he calls him Lord. No one does that. There's a king. No one calls his child Lord in the kingdom of God of intelligence during the reign of men. So they knew that. So this is a query he posed to him. In doubt of the accuracy and validity that the Christ is actually David's son. He's posing them the doubt that's doubt them. How can, how can he be a son? He calls him Lord. Uh, not Lord like Sarah called Abraham. Lord like you're a ruler over my soul. Jesus expecting them to remember Proverbs 34, brother. You got to hold on to that. That's clear. The one who holds his wind, the wind in his fist, who laid this earth out, got a son. So he's not going to get around it. That's not coming out the Bible at no point. They were supposed to understand that. Nathaniel, without being grilled on it, knew you're the son of God. Peter, without being grilled on it, knew you're the son of God. But the idea is also a question deals with to ask someone a question, interrogate, to ask or inquire, to make a question of doubt. And so you approaching the father like this will get in trouble. Then this is what the lesson is about. People think because they address you like that, that it's okay with God. It's not. Ignorance only gets a short period of lifespan, then it's snuffed out because you're only repeating what the Lord has said. And so there is a thing as an ignorant question. You don't want to ask it. So we're trying to prevent these things by the lesson tonight. Now let's look at, if you will, Exodus 3 and 9. Now therefore, behold, the crowd of the children of Israel is come unto me. I've also seen the oppression while with the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, God the Father, talking to Moses, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said to God, Who am I? That I should go into Pharaoh 
that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. That question is okay. Why? It is a question that many people ask when God spoke to them. To ask them to go do something. It's like, why was I selected? Who am I? Mm. Seeing I'm nothing. Amen. God doesn't get excited about that. Now this is a legitimate question. Because the individual knows you are nothing. And I shouldn't be getting you. But because of my strength and compassion and love, I select you. So, he said, certainly I will be with thee. Now watch. Okay, now I want you to note verse 12. This is the point of anger after verse 12. I just validated. You are a nothing and a nobody. You're right. I didn't deny. Who are you? Right. But I'm going to be with you. And this shall be a token unto you. I'm going to show you the token I'm going to use that I've sent thee. Now look what he says. This shall be a token. Notice this. Unto you Moses. That I have sent you. Now that's pretty plain. When thou has brought forth the people out of Egypt. You shall serve God upon his mouth. He says the token will be. When you get to the mountain. You're going to serve me. and Because you know. You are nothing and a nobody. And you shouldn't be able to take them out of Egypt. Man, Pharaoh will wipe up the water with you. So, and Moses said to God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God your father sent me unto you, and they shall say unto me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Second question of legitimacy. I don't know what to respond to them. I don't know. Now let's remember something now. There has been a God since the Lord said, let there be light. Okay, now. It's a long time since Moses comes on the scene. We done had so much happen. Man, the flood, all types of things. So, we got a case here where Moses is saying, well, who, who will I identify with? You know, well, what, what name, what imagery, what lettering? Do I need? So, because the image is going to give validation to the name. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. He said, Thus shalt thou send to the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. Okay, now, now you know, I want to look at this because a lot of people, some people want to make this Jesus Christ. This was wrong with humans. That's why we embarrass ourselves. Jesus can't have a father if he exists of his own. Do you think you can be here without a father? Adam can't be here without a father. His father's God, the Father. Let's make sure we keep this right. We got some we got some stuff so silly. It's, I'm not surprised it comes out of St. Mouth, really knowing how wicked the children of God can be. But this term, I am, 1961, a primitive root compared to 1933. To exist, that is, be or become, come to pass, always emphatic. See, this also means to become. So did the father become or has he always been? So see, you can't take that meaning. I already said, first one, to exist, become, come to pass, always emphatic. And not a mere copula or auxiliary, a beacon altogether different ways it's been said, accomplished, committed, break curse. This is, this is a this statement, Haya is used in multiple different things. We're gonna read this whole list. The one you and I are concerned about is the one that says exist. I exist. I exist. That's what he said. I exist. That's all I tell you. Now, now, Jesus can't say this with a father. See, this is what's wrong. Let me tell you something. I'm going to make sure I kill this while I got breath. There's no such thing as triune in the, in the Bible. There's no three in one. There's no, you don't see, you, you show me terms like that. If a person knew who God was, they would know that's the father. Whenever it is said, the ultimate, that's always going to be the father. 
He's not the father of flesh. Or he's the father of light. And the father of spirits. Amen. So you can never say Jesus is the You see I am in the New Testament. He's saying who I am. I am he. That's what he said. Jesus never says I am. I am. You see us. See, that's what I would tell you about, about brethren. Listen, God help us. Just make sure you listen to men when they talk. That's all I'm going to tell you. Just, just listen to them. There's a lot to help you. Here you have Listen to me. Listen to people. Make sure what he's saying. Our exaltation is not reconfiguration of what the Lord has already said. So if this is the Father saying this. No one else in the Bible is referred to as the Father of lights and spirits than the Father. We're done. Moving on. Verse 15. And God said to him, Moreover unto Moses, Thou shalt send to the children of Israel the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, had sent me unto you. This is my name forever. This is what he's pointing out. This, now notice, he mentioned three different things here. So what is he talking about? This is my image. I am the one who is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and James. He said forever. And this is my memorial to all generations. This will be forever known. When somebody is confused about who you're talking about. You're talking about Molech? Uh, you're talking about Vishnu? Ugh. I'm talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and James. And we're done. You didn't know that too bad. Let me teach you about it or move out the way. We don't talk no more. Because the time of nonsense is over. It's time to move forward. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have truly visited you and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaan. Now, I want you to stop for a minute. Okay, look at this for a minute. He doesn't care if they didn't see him appear to Moses. He doesn't care at all. Just go tell them, I appeared to you. And this is the identification mark. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's God. That's all you need to do. He says, and tell them, I'm going to give you the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The land flowing with milk and honey. Look at that list. Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and the Jebusites. You know the Jebusites? Are the last ones defeated literally? You know, you know, they're going to fight and get all that land, and David's going to get the kingship Amen. after Saul has been killed by the hand of the Lord through the Philistine. And David's going to want to go all the way down, down to Jerusalem, make that his city. And the Jebusites say, Come and take it. In essence, come and take it. If you can take it, come get it. And he did, went down there and whooped them silly and took it. This group here, though, these Jebusites, that was some of them still down there. I said, man, we're not giving up this section. This is ours. This land, these, these nations are very, very powerful. Nobody has bothered them since the days of Abraham. You believe that? The Canaanites have been there since Abraham. He told me, he said, they're going to make me mad eventually, though, and I'm going to get land to your children. A, a nation, we talked about that, will stay in effect until the law remove it. And it will be removed, no matter how bad it wants to stay in effect, when the law says that you're done. No matter it could be this nation, they want to destroy no matter how long America been here. You know how long them came nights been there, man? This land should get wiped out in a minute if the law wants it to. People need to understand. It's not the promised land. This is America. It's not the promised land. And so verse 18. they shall hearken to thy voice. Now notice. Note verse 18. So we've got some verses to know. 12. He says I'll be with you. That's one. He tells him. The power. And understanding. To note when you get to the mountain. You will know this is the token that I was with you because you can't do this. Then he points out to him what to go and tell them. Tells them clearly. I met with you. Tell them Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's going to be the signal. They're going to know. <coughs> I'm with you. And then he says in verse 18, and they shall hearken to thy voice. 
three statements he makes to him. Guarantee him it's going to work. And I shall come thou and the elders of Israel to the king of Egypt and shall go say unto them, the Lord God of the Hebrews hath met with us. He doesn't care that Pharaoh didn't see that. And now let us go. We beg you three days journey to the wilderness that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. The initial movement is just, I just want them, it's going to take them three days to get there. They're going to come and they're going to worship me. And then that's it. That's, that's really what we just want to do, go to church. And I'm sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt. With all my wonders, he tells him. The fourth thing, he's not going to let you go, but I still need you to go tell him. And I'll stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. So here's the fourth thing. Okay, he's not going to let you go, but I'm going to smite the land, and then you're going to get out of it. He's already told them this much, and it is enough. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Notice what he says. I'm going to turn their heart towards you because they hate y'all. I'm going to turn their heart towards you. And it's a kind of pass that when you go, you shall not go empty. How? Tells him, I ain't not going to empty. But every woman, did you notice that? Not man. Every woman shall bar of her neighbor and of her that sojourned in her house jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And you shall put them upon your sons, upon your daughter, and you shall spoil the Jews. They're going to walk out of there dressed down from head to toe. Gold and nice clothes. He said, just like if you'd have went in there and whooped them. Now this is God's plan. Now, Moses asked two allowed questions. How am I selected? You know, why was I selected? Jim, you know, I mean, who am I that I should even do something this great? Secondly, who will I tell them sent me? Because they're going to want to know. Verse 1 of chapter 4. And Moses answered and said, but already in trouble. The minute that come out your mouth. How many times have you talked to saints? I'm not saying just because you say but it's going to be wrong. How many times have you read us because you're giving a saint or a sinner an exact text and they go, but what about thief on the cross? Okay. Amen. I just told you, I said, but what about thief on the cross? Okay. Okay, well, hold on. We might go ahead on and run a little more with him. Answer that. Jesus hasn't died yet. He hasn't been buried out and resurrected. Baptism mimics that. He's got to do the first. He's got to be the first fruit. So that's why he can save this guy because Mark 2.10 is clear. While I'm on earth, I can forgive sins. Next but, you're in trouble. Next but, you're in trouble. If you question that anymore, you're in trouble. So you're telling me, but, but what you're telling me, everybody else lost that don't do this? Well, what did we just tell you? See, now you, you, you come back. Now it's a query and the kind that goes, I doubt the accuracy of what you're saying. Now you kill it. That's like a fire with the Lord throwing a little stick on there. Another little stick. That fire, shoot, kick up. Another little stick. And you're kindling his anger. And at some point, he's going to squash you. How he does that, we don't know. We just don't want to be squashed with you. Moses answered and said, but behold, they will not believe me. Didn't he say already that they will listen to you? Moses says, but they will not believe me. Okay, now the time is starting to kindle the fire of anger. This is Moses' personal belief system. Then he says, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, the Lord is not appointed, or not, not appeared unto thee. How he know what they're going to say? Amen. Are you God, Moses? I'm not beating him up, but I mean, this is just how we do. But the Lord already said that... This is what you tell him. He's clear. This is what you tell him. Verse 18. What did we mark? And they shall hearken to thy voice. Moses replied. But they will not believe me. Nor hearken to my voice. What did the Lord say? They shall hearken to thy voice. And Moses said. But they will not believe me. Now you see. Now, now I'm mad. So I'm getting mad now. See because I told you they're going to tell you. You're going to tell me. 
that they're not going to listen to you. This is what we do, brother. You, you can't, this is how you get in trouble with the Lord doing this kind of stuff. And the Lord said unto him, what is in thy hand? He said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground. And they became a serpent and Moses fled before him. So the Lord knows, okay, so you don't believe me. Okay, so the Lord says, okay, all right, okay, let me, let me show you something else. And the Lord said to Moses, put forth thy hand and take it by the tail. He does that, put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. He says that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob had appeared unto thee. And the Lord said, furthermore, until put now thy hand into thy bosom. And he said, he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, put thine hand into thy bosom again. He put his hand into his bosom again. And he plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And it came to pass. If, and he says, it shall come to pass. If they would not hearken, forgive me, if they would not believe thee, Neither hearken to the voice of the first side with the, with the snake, we know. So they will believe the voice of the latter side. Okay, I'll give you a say, since you, since you think I don't know what I'm doing and they're not going to listen to you, okay, this is what we're going to do. You're going to use this rod and you're going to see this is a sign you show them. You're going to show them, you better put your hand now. They don't believe this one. Look at that. Put it back in there. He's not a trick, he's not a magician. Just so I see the Lord. Who can do this? The Lord is with me. Okay. And the Lord said unto him, clearly this is what will be done. Look what else he says. And it comes to pass. They will not believe they need the heart to the first, the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the last sign. It shall come to pass that they believe not also these two signs. I'm going to give you a third one. Neither hearken unto thy voice that thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it upon a dry land and the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon a dry land. Now listen, okay. Now watch this. Okay, the Lord has said these are the three signs that you're going to need. And you know what this does? This helps Moses fear that they're not going to believe him. He's helping Moses. He's definitely helping Moses. He's helping you and I we Repeat the words of the Bible. They won't listen. Give another scripture. And then when it gets to the point where you have nothing else to say, you leave him alone. You can't help him. And Moses said unto the Lord, Oh my Lord, I'm not eloquent. Here we go again. Neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken to thy servant, but I am slow speech of a slow tongue. So Moses had a slow way of talking. We don't know exactly what that is. But it's not like normal men. Okay? And he says, since I've been talking to you, it hasn't changed. I'm sped up since I've been talking to you. So he's thinking, why should it change? And the Lord said unto him, who had made man's mouth? Or who make it the dumb or deaf? Are seen or the blind have not out the law. Anybody born blind, the law says, I made him. I made him. He can't hear. I made him. I knew he couldn't hear when I made him. Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. So I just, you know, I already told him I'll be with you. So the Lord is very patient with Moses, but he's kindling the anger. He says, Yeah, I can see. He's, gone, he's kindling the anger because he's, he's asking questions beyond explanation. And he said, Oh my Lord, send I pray thee by the hand of him whom thou wast sent. Send somebody else. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. So now you know, so now you know, okay, look here, okay. You, you had an opportunity to withstand me. You still haven't hit the mark yet. I want, I want to keep it in line. You haven't hit the mark yet. But you're withstanding me. So I'm coming back at you. I already told you I was going to be with you in the first round. And you come back and say they won't believe me. I told you they are going to believe me. So I gave you three signs. Still, uh, now you're talking about your mouth. So you know, it's like okay, so now what happens? Look at this word kindled. 
Well, that's just important because you got to know, brethren, uh, they, the people going to make you mad too, the same way. They're going to keep needling you till you get mad because you are just like the law. He, they're made in his image and like it. Now, this word kindle, 2734, H2734, to go or grow warm, figuratively, to blaze, jealousy, be angry. See, see, now with this last statement, you blaze me up. I'm blazed up now. It's kindled, man. I'm good to go. I'm on fire. Now watch the response now from the Lord. And the angel of the Lord was killing against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And I saw, behold, he coming forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth and will teach you what you shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman to the people. And he shall be even, he shall be to thee instead of a mouth. And thou shalt be to him instead of God. Moses is told, when I tell you something, he's going to be like your mouth, and you're going to be like God, like me telling him what to say. That's how I'm going to talk to him. You going to talk to him. He says that clearly. He says, and thou shalt take this rod in thine hand, and or thou shalt do signs. And Moses went and returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said, and let me go, I pray thee, and return unto my brethren which are in Egypt, and see whether they be yet alive. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. And the Lord said unto Moses and Midian, Go, return unto Egypt. All the men are dead which sought thy life. Remember, Moses killed them Egyptian, Amen. which is bad news. Moses took his wife, his sons, and set them upon that, and returned to the land of Egypt. Moses took the rod of God in his hand. So now we understand what we should do. You don't push God with doubt. And continue and continue and continue. See, this is not a good thing that the Lord got angry. It's not good. Because you have to understand you shouldn't do this. Uh, he's through talking with Moses now. Notice no more questions are asked. There is a display of a response that Moses is now not as bold as he was before to ask any more questions. That's important, brother. That's how you and I should understand. You know, you're dealing with people that they keep continuing to come at you with additional questions. And you have to understand, you could easily go beyond what the law wants you to do. When you recognize, okay, I answered that already. This, 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 you know, this is it. So this is it. This is why we're going to stop right here. God stops right here. This is it. Take Aaron. So we're not talking no more. There's nothing else coming out. But Lord, no, nah, now nah, that's it. And see, God has nothing else to say to him about this. His anger's kindled. So it's blazed now. And so Moses, you need to move on this. And Moses moves. And that's what you need to understand. Why is that important? Because, brethren, you don't want to push God to this level. You just don't. Remember, that's a relationship built with God and Moses that's unique. Moses. It's by far the meekest man. By far. He's ahead of others on meekness. Uh, he is very close to God. God said, I talked to Aaron and Miriam in a dream. But a prophet or anybody else in this in y'all group. But to him, I talked to him face to face. So we have to understand is that. You may not be as close to God as Moses was. You don't want to start pushing on the Lord and going up against him. Because this is what it means for a person to question God. And we need to understand it. I want to encourage you, please. Do not enter into this realm. This is an example of Moses doubting. And this is an example to you and me. Brother, don't walk like this. See, we're supposed to acknowledge, you know, Moses should have got it on the first round. But God works with him. But he keeps putting, and then now, then he gets angry. Why would you want to make God angry? That's not a good thing to make God angry. It's never been good to make him angry. It's compassion, he loves you. you already acknowledge you're a nobody. But then act like a nobody and just obey. But the idea is this is what men do. So if a guy that's the meekest man by far, 
can step out of line, so can you and I. And that's what you and I want to do, brother. Please encourage you to stand fast in this area. Do not question God to the point of anger and continuing. Because then the Lord will not come at you at the same level. I think sometimes what we do is we think that it's okay to push the wrong button with people. To press them and press them. Because you shouldn't do that. Because that's a different view of you now. That's a different image that the Lord will have you look at you different. So, okay, so, so this is how you're going to be. Every time we do something, let us learn from Jonah. What's the matter with Jonah? I mean, man, won't you, won't you do what the Lord told you? So should we be like Jonah, just run? And I'm going to go where the Lord is not? And I'm going to act like I don't know who he is? So I don't have to do what he told me? See, look at Jonah. Jonah's a great man, but what he did was not righteousness. That's not the right thing to do, to press God. So when the Lord tells us what to do, we need to do it. How many times does the Lord need to tell us you need to have elders, deacons, evangelists, and Bible teachers? So you just keep on pushing him, huh? Keep on pushing. You know, well, we, we doing all right without that. Some people have elders, deacons, Bible teachers, no evangelists. So we have evangelists only. No elders, no deacons, no Bible teachers. They do everything. So we have deacons and evangelists. No way on this. Not one. And so it's like, how long we press the Lord? He already said what he want us to have. Let's go there and then we'll wrap this up. This is just one area I want to point out. Ephesians 4. He tells us. So this is what saints do. Ephesians 4. This is how we function. Ephesians 4 and verse number 11. And he gave some apostles. And some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. What's the purpose? Till we're all coming to the unity of the faith, and the knowledge of the Son of God, and to a perfect man, to the measure of the nature, stature, forgive me, of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children. Tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the sight of men, and cutting craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied, according to the effectual working and the measure of every part, making an increase of the body. The edifying of itself in love. Why would I say after all that? So why we need elders and deacons? Why we, we just ran? Amen. I mean, man, this is this is explanation Amen. given. Why we need evangelists? The elders can preach, can't they? We can say that much. Don't nobody need no money. What's the brother just want people? I still don't know why we need them. He just told you why. So so what do you say to a person like that? What do you do? Uh, he just explained. He gave this as he descended and went up. He said, okay, I'm going to give this. This is what Jesus said. Okay, this is going to keep you all growing in the right direction. Everything going to be together like this. Why do we need that, Jesus? It's like, well, what is wrong with you? See, man gets to the point to where it just angers God. It just angers. Told you very detailed. Told you who gave him. Why we need them. So you might say, okay, well, let's go to some other scriptures and show. It must be right. The Holy Ghost appoints them. Acts 20. 7. I mean, Acts 20, forgive me, 28. Acts 20, 28. Here's another scripture. To heed therefore unto yourselves. And to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. To feed the church of God. Which he purchased with his own blood. He made you overseers. Who are these overseers and what is the understanding? Verse 17. And from Melinda's he sent to Elvis and called the elders of the church. There we go. All right. So we see Paul in a matter of a couple of years ordained these. A set in motion that which would need to be ordained. And a couple of years he there, he calls back for them. Hey. 
I want to call to the elders before I leave. Before I go, because I'm never coming back here again. I'm not going to be alive to come back. Never going to make it back. And so the idea, now you got to say, okay, so it's important. It's important to have. So a person has to stop questioning the government of God and the other things that are in the church. They were placed there by the Lord. As Moses after that, okay, we're not going to keep going through this while you don't think you can do it. I selected you. When Aaron, when Aaron and Miriam questioned that Moses just like them, the Lord rebuked them Amen. and made Miriam turn leprous like his hand turned leprous. It, they see, he said, God going to be, she's going to be out the cap seven days. She had no authority to disrespect me. He reminded Moses if she had disrespected her daddy, he'd have spit in her face. Y'all wouldn't have said nothing. So, outside, take her outside the camp. Nobody going nowhere for seven days. Because a person has to understand the Lord anger is kindled. Now, everybody knows who Moses is when Aaron and Miriam began to question his authority and his uh, having maybe more than them, man, his anger is whoop, immediate. Moses doesn't even know what's going on. He calls all three to, the, to me. Moses has no idea what's going on. So, what's the warning, Ozan? Don't think you're going to get to do what Moses did. Keep on pushing the Lord. That's what we're telling you. You see how Aaron and Miriam have a simple conversation and all of a sudden, whoop, blaze. Blaze, hey, I need to talk to everybody. Come over here, please. Uh, you know, when I talk to Moses, I talk to him to his face. Like a man talking to a friend. I talk to everybody else in dreams and vision. And who are you to think that you could talk against my servant Moses? Boom, immediately, leprosy. And then Aaron begs and calls Moses, my Lord, please pray. Let her not be as one that's dead. He turns to the Lord, man, look, this is how she's going to be. Now go check out the camp. I got the camp. See, so now you see. I don't think we'll get all this adjustment to God and keep on talking against God and keep on questioning God. Or oh, when well, Moses asked, okay, okay, now keep on here. You not Moses. Remember that. We not Moses. Praise God. First Corinthians 15 and verse number three. Let us be mindful and learn. The four things are written for our learning. We should learn. Do not press on God. Move swiftly on the work he's asked us to do. As we, as we pointed out earlier, uh, we comprehend Sister Iris Hernandez came down from St. Martin to visit. And uh, we pointed out the understanding of she loved Sister Gwen Carr. I loved the teaching. But listen to her. She commended her. I was able to bring that message to Sister Carr. She was alive. And Sister Carr returned the message back. So I tell her she loves her. And that she appreciates her faith that she has too. And so uh, when she does get it all by this time, Sister Carr is going on to the other side of life. But nevertheless, she's able to see the fruit that is here that she's heard about through Zoom classes and other things that have existed and gospel messages. The radio program, Brother Javier, Brother Henry at Battle, Brother Dwayne Hamilton one time was in this particular number battle with. She's learned from that. That's how she got baptized by the Church of Christ. I got baptized and then baptized the whole family. Got them baptized by teaching them the truth. And so let's remember that the message carries out. But what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? 1 Corinthians 15, 3. Father, deliver you first of all that which I also receive. I Christ died for sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Goes to a list of who saw. Brother Augustine Blanca lives in Mormon territory, Salt Lake City, Utah. They refuse to believe this verse 8. Last of all, was seeing me also as one born out due time. The Mormons teach that Jesus appeared in America. That's a lie. Nobody was living here. He would have come and preached to nothing but animals. No new human beings living here in America. Nobody was on the Hawaii. Man had not gravitated that far. Oh, it was fully populated over on that end, elbow to elbow, so to speak. A lot of people. A lot of people. But not a gravitated over here. So they cooked up that lie, and then they cooked the lie that they are living apostles today. And they're always making more apostles, which is a lie. Paul says, last of all, seen of me. It's my boy, I do time. See, so that's all you need is to deny a text and say that's a lie and teach otherwise, and you're lost. 
That's why they don't know about baptism and the understanding of the church. Mark 16 and 15. Go your entire world and preach the gospel. To every creature, he that believes in baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. That's Jesus. I guess we can believe him, can we? Acts 2 and 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel, Peter said, no, surely that God had made the same Jesus who crucified, both Lord and Christ. God made him that. See, God has to empower Jesus to be Lord and Christ. That's very important, except. And when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, said to Peter, to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said, to repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For the mission of sins, you shall see the gift of the Holy Ghost. Pretty read, pretty easy read. For the promise unto you to your children and all that fall, even as men as the Lord our God shall call him in the word that he testified to God, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly receive his word of baptized in the same day that are added to them about 3,000 souls. They contend steadfast in the apostle doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and in prayer. Look who asked to the church, Acts 2 47. Praise God, have faith with all the people. And the law added to the church day that such should be saved. Acts chapter 8 and verse number 35. The eunuch came from church still looking at his Bible. Then Philip opened his mouth, began the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. How come he couldn't see that? Because he's not saved. His eyes are blind to the knowledge that Jesus Christ is talked about in Isaiah, what we call 53. As they went on their way to carry a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, it's wonderful to hinder me to be baptized. Philip said, I believe of thy heart, thy man. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He commanded the child to stand still. They went down both to the water, but Philip had a eunuch, and he baptized him. What a better place to not use water. What a better place to have a sinner's prayer. Hot desert, hard to find water. Why doesn't it? Because it can't be done. You must be baptized to be saved. And you'll have to be baptized again, Acts 19, 1 through 5. If you are baptized into a denomination, what would that be? Mormons, Baptists, Catholic, Methodists, made up things, uh, made up religions. The people who started them are dead. Jesus is alive. His church is forever alive. Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, another group created by dead men. False representation of Christ or none at all. Rep no type of representation of the Lord at all. Nevertheless, this eunuch found the truth. He commanded the chariot to stand still. They went down both to the water, both fed up in the eunuch, and he baptized him. Now the rejoicing can begin. How would you like to be this guy? They said, what happened to the guy that baptized him? He just disappeared, man. He said, well, what, what a story, right? It's the only one he got. And he knew, I know what happened. Oh, what somebody would say, man, it was hot in that desert. You know, you might, I'm just saying, man, I'm just saying nothing. I know what happened. You know how awkward it is when you're trying to tell people about the law? I'm just encouraging you to give Brother Fred's lesson Wednesday to see the nonsense Jesus went through, especially on a Sabbath day. Every Sabbath day, watched, looked at, what's he going to do? What a way to treat a man doing miracles. No wonder they were a cursed nation. 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, for by one spirit are we all baptized in the one body, whether it be Jews or Gentiles, whether it be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. What's the one body? The church, Colossians 1 18. He is the head of the body, the church. The church is the body. He feeds in the test to the same thing, and we must accept that. Will it save me? Well, let's see. Before we read this, I always like to try to remind whenever possible. Did your preacher say baptism? Don't say your pastor, your daddy, your mother. Well, let's read it. Now, let's see what you're going to read. First Peter 3, 21. The like figure went to even baptisms also. Now, nah, save us. That's pretty easy. Not the putting away the filth the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. That's how you call. That's what it means. Call, answer, to queer, to inquire. You're inquiring about salvation. Abba, Father, save me. That's how it's done. Not by calling on the name, Jesus, Father, Holy Ghost. It means to call this way. He tells us, who has gone to heaven on the right hand of God, angel, authority, and powers, being made subject unto him. Revelation 2.10. Jesus said himself, and none of all things without the suffer, behold, the devil shall cast some in the prison. He says, that you may be tried. You shall have tribulation ten days, be thou faithful unto death. 
I'll give thee a crown of life. You know, the devil at any time, unless God get a green light, can snatch you up and imprison you with sickness, financial burdens, a hatred, a deep hatred by other people against you, hatred of you in the church. You shock. What you going to do? He going to challenge you. He going to say, watch him, Lord. I know he ain't no good. Watch him. She's not right. She's going to burn out on you in a second. And will you? Because many do. I don't think that they don't. I don't think. No, he doesn't give you more than you can bear. So what happens when you fall? If the Lord doesn't allow you to be challenged, knowing you should be able to withstand, then how does people fall? So he doesn't give you more than you can bear. So the answer is, why did you fall? Because you couldn't bear. How did you go to hell? Because you couldn't bear. You wouldn't listen. See, people try to act like that they can't fall. No, no, there'd be nobody in here. It'd be empty, like hollowed out, nothing but angels. But there's plenty of people that has gotten even bigger. Just remember in your heart and mind, brother, that the Lord loves you. Listen to the message. You need to be baptized. Stay standing when we sit down. Well, you need prayer. Stay standing when we sit down. Hold up your hand if you can't get up. You listen to this message as a V-shaped object, brother Free is set up. You touch it. Or you touch that screen. You can snap it either way. Pops open and the numbers pop at the bottom. Several numbers, both here, Goose Creek, and some other numbers that may be there. You call those individuals and let them know what's going on in your life. That's what Augustine did. Let me know what was going on in his life. I knew then he needed Christ. Taught him some scriptures. Planted some seeds. I got the, I got the plant and water, but God got to get the increase. Sometimes you get the plant and water. Nevertheless, still going to be increased by the Lord. And so we have to understand as we hope we'll be faithful, as we hope all the saints will remain faithful. But you and I have to understand that you don't want to take your life. You don't want to take no one else's life. Don't run out on your marriage. That's not going to fix anything. Don't kill yourself. You accomplish nothing. Judas is the son of perdition because he took his life. Peter denied Jesus three times. How come he isn't the son of perdition? He didn't take his life. Also, he still remained faithful. Judas took his life. I tell people, tell them, yeah, you're not going to take your life and make it. No, you're not. Because the Lord has told us this is why he's lost. He will never turn to the Lord for rescue. I'll fix it myself. I'll take my life. You're guaranteed the beginning of an eternal torture that never, ever ends. So do not do it and we beg you. You need counsel for whatever reason. Maybe your marriage is in shambles. Call the number. Any one of those brethren on there can counsel you and tell you what to do. Even those that are single because we know the word of God. That's Titus, Timothy, and Paul. Whatever you need, come now together we stand and sing heaven's invitation. Oh, do not.